Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are adding another video in the miscellaneous series. Today we will be talking about pipe flow. So far we have discussed about laminar flow in several occasions, but we haven't discussed about pipe flow. In principle, pipe flow in ComSol Multiphysics is different from laminar flow. While we solve for laminar flow, we assume there is no frictional loss inside the channel or pipe. If you remember, when we talk about laminar flow, we basically choose a dimension which is in micrometer of diameter and length in centimeters. But in real life pipe flow situations, we have a network of pipe that is spanning over multiple meters or kilometers sometimes. So in those cases, while we push the liquid inside the pipe, we need to supply energy and there are multiple losses where while the liquid or the fluid flows inside the pipe. The losses may come from the bending. It may also come from the valves because in line we have multiple valves. We have multiple contraction and expansion of the channel. So all those things basically lead to wake formation in the liquid and we basically have a loss and we, if we need to calculate the actual velocity or actual pressure at a certain location of the pipeline, we need to incorporate those losses. So without further delay, let me go to the ComSol interface. So we'll be taking a 2D option and pipe flow we'll be working with. So let me search pipe flow. So this is pipe flow physics. So we, ha we have added pipe flow and in study we will be adding the stationary study i click on done as i have mentioned we will be working in the meter domain so here it is in meter i will not change the unit now i go to the option sketch and i will be taking a polygon option i will make a network of pipe suppose it starts from here say it starts from minus 2 it goes up to 0 then it takes an elevation goes somewhere here then it comes to here again it may come down and say going in this direction so this may be the pipeline i have arbitrarily taken a certain network in real scenario it could be even complicated so now what I do is I take the material because I need to say which material is flowing inside the pipe. So I'll be looking for water. So I write water and click on search. Water liquid is to be taken. I double clicked so it has been added and you can see the water has been added. Now one thing may come in your mind, why am I doing it as a line? So it's a kind of one dimensional line. The reason is in pipe flow, the physics is defined such a way, even if we are taking a line, it will basically solve for a three dimensional case. There are by default options where it will ask for the cross section of the pipe so we can choose the cross section like circular cross section or rectangular cross section that means it it actually defines the path through which the liquid is flowing but it has been assumed that i mean i, I mean in the background the shape of the pipe is defined i'll show you in this particular option so <laughs> initially let me show you the equation so which equation we are solving if you look at the equation, it is similar to the momentum equation or Navier-Stokes equation which we generally use for laminar flow. So this is the time dependent term, this is the convective term, this is the pressure gradient and this is the additional term which we are taking and this term is actually accounted, this term is accounting for the losses. If you remember from your fluid mechanics courses, the losses due to fitting due to bending are proportional to the square of the velocity and there is a loss proportional frictional constant. So this is what is there. And if you see here, it is basically solving for the velocity which is acting in the tangential direction. 
So the pipeline can be having different irregular change, I mean directional changes, but whenever it is solving, it is solving for the tangential velocity. So now I right click here, I define an inlet. So this is the inlet. So when you define an inlet, it will ask for which kind of pipe flow situation you are solving for. If you look at, look at the drop down menu, you will be getting those options like pump. So it's, is it a pump driven flow? Whether you have a pump source at the inlet, you are pumping the fluid. Whether it's a reservoir, it's a reservoir means you have a tank that is kept at an elevation that is giving you certain head and because of head, the liquid is flowing through the channel. So I'll be going ahead with the reservoir option and in the reservoir, we'll have certain pressure. So say the pressure is 101325, which is atmospheric pressure plus certain head will be putting. Suppose 50 meter of head I am putting. So head has to be converted into pressure. So pressure is H rho G. So PFL dot rho. It will take the rho from the material into G. So in COMSOL G is defined as G const. So there is some issue with the unknown variable. Okay, I wrote PFT. It's not PFT, PFL. Yeah, <clears throat> now it's showing black color. That means unit is consistent. So we have added additional 50 meter of head here. And because of that, what will happen? It will be flowing through this pipeline. Now, what I do is there are certain bendings and due to those bendings, we will have, we have to add losses. So if you right click here, you'll see there are multiple loss options already there. So by default, those options are there like valve, bend, T junction, Y junction. So I have not taken any T junction or Y junction here. I have taken a bend, uh, one, two, three, four bends. So I'll be taking the option bend only. So this is a bend. We can also take valve, but for the time being, I'm not making the things complicated. So I'm only selecting the bend, but you can choose the option based on your requirement. So I'm again, I'm showing contraction expansion. If there is any valve bend N way junction, T junction, Y junction. So we have taken the bend and in the fluid properties, let me check the material properties have been taken <clears throat> in pipe flow properties. I was asking why am I taking a single line, but still it will take a three dimensional pipe. So here is the option. It is asking for the cross section. So the cross section is say circular and it is also asking for the inner diameter. So I choose it by default 10 centimeter. And then what I do is, okay, so pipe cross section diameter is taken. Initially the pressure is 101325 Pascal. I have taken an elevated pressure at the inlet. I have selected the bends. So bends, the K value is taking by default. So it's a 90 degree standard elbow so it has automatically taken there are multiple other options 45 degree bend user define loss coefficient you can define your loss coefficient so everything is taken now i'll go for the meshing so this is okay for say finer okay now I hope all the things are defined. Let me click on compute. Let me see what happens. I hope the simulation will run. Yeah, it's running. Now you can see this is how the pressure distribution looks like. So when there is a bend, there is a sudden change of pressure. You can see it's not totally continuous. I mean, it's continuous, but it does not look like gradual change because when there is elbow, there is a sudden pressure drop here. So you can see this is showing in reddish color, whereas suddenly it has become this yellow color, then green, then blue, then deep blue. So there is a sudden change whenever you are having this bend. But here, if you see, there is no 
sudden change. So this loss is coming into the picture. Now <clears throat> let me show you the velocity. So this is how this direction the fluid is moving and it's moving with a very high velocity. This may be impractical because I might have taken very high inlet pressure. So let me reduce the uh, head to 5 meter, 5 meter of head. Now run the simulation once again and then we'll see the velocity will come down. So here is the velocity. Now it has come down to 4.73. So you can actually choose the realistic boundary conditions. Once you work with this particular physics, you will be more aware of your realistic boundary conditions. If you put real boundary conditions, you will be getting real fluid velocity and real pressure distribution. So this particular physics is very much helpful who are working with industrial problem and trying to simulate it in COMSOL. I hope this particular video was helpful. If so, kindly share our videos with your peers and subscribe to our channel.